Coming up now on Midday, a house fire in Salt Lake City. Hear from the homeowner who was inside when those flames broke out. Plus new technology to help keep doctors safe and save crucial supplies. More on the new way doctors are giving x-rays at the University of Utah Hospital. Plus, Rosie and Brian, I'm still tracking those showers and isolated thunderstorms for southern Utah. Details coming up in just a bit. Live from Utah's first TV station, ABC 4 News Midday starts now. Thanks for joining us for Midday. I'm Brian Carlson. And I'm Rosie Nguyen, helping during the pandemic. We'll get to your COVID-19 headlines in just a moment. Yeah, but first we begin with a house fire forcing a woman in the avenues out of her house. It broke out this morning near 2nd North and N Street in Salt Lake City. Firefighters say that fire started outside, spread up the wall and then into the attic. The homeowner was inside asleep at the time until her roommate woke her up. She came downstairs from upstairs and yelled, there's a fire, the house is on fire, grab the dogs, get out now. And she says with everything going on right now, this made it even more frightening. First responders say she'll likely be displaced from her home for one to two days. Now to an update in the murder of a young couple in West Jordan. Police have arrested a woman for allegedly helping the suspected killer escape, and they need your help in finding him. Police are searching for 31-year-old Albert Enoch Johnson. They believe he's Polynesian, 5'10 and 270 pounds. They say he's driving a 2008 dark gray Toyota Corolla Utah license plate V464MW. Police are calling this crime a home invasion. They say the Butterfield couple knew Johnson, but he was an intruder in their home. They believe he was likely injured during the struggle. We also believe that Mr. Johnson has some injuries as a result of this incident. Uh, we do believe that there was an altercation between the Butterfields uh, and Mr. Johnson during the invasion, during the home invasion. Uh, those injuries we believe are consistent with the knife so we believe that he was either stabbed or cut with that knife. And we also believe that those injuries are likely on his appendages, so his arms or his legs. Now, if you know where he is, you're asked to call West Jordan Police at the number on your screen at 801-256-2000. And now the latest numbers on the COVID-19 coronavirus. According to John Hopkins University, there are currently more than two and a half million confirmed cases around the world. That jumped another 100,000 in just a matter of hours. So far, 659,000 people have recovered, 171,000 have died. In the U.S., we now have more than 788,000 cases. Over 73,000 have recovered and 42,000 people have died. Now, here in Utah, we're up to more than 3,000 confirmed cases. 68,000 people have been tested and 268 people have been treated in the hospital, whereas 28 people have died. Now, as anxious as we all are to get back to normal life, one concern with this pandemic is the possibility of a second wave of that virus hitting this fall. The state's epidemiologist says Utah is seeing a smaller number of cases every day, which means social distancing is working. But they expect the coronavirus to follow patterns of previous viruses. That means the chance for another wave of cases in the fall once we've eased our restrictions. And what's particularly concerning about a potential second wave is that we don't have a lot of cases here in Utah, so we can't expect for a lot of herd immunity and a vaccine won't be available by then. So we're going to have to continue to rely upon people isolating themselves when they are sick to prevent the spread of disease further. Now, even though our state shows signs of flattening the curve, as they say, Utahns still need this practice safe social distancing. Doctors predict a vaccine again, as you heard her talk about, it won't be available until at least next summer. The Salt Lake County Health Department is now receiving national recognition for its COVID-19 contact tracing efforts. The county currently has more than 1600 cases of COVID-19. Health officials believe they were able to find the source of infection in 85% of their cases. The contact tracers will ask patients questions like what day they started showing symptoms or if they have shortness of breath. The faster we can contact these people and educate them to either isolate or quarantine, that's going to help decrease the spread of this infection. Nurse Booth says most people expect the call and some are afraid to go back into public after they've learned that they've been exposed to the virus. The University of Utah Health has a new safer way to test respiratory illness in COVID-19 patients. ABC 4's Jared Giottinini is live in Salt Lake City. He just spoke with a doctor sharing this morning more on how this works. Good morning, Jared. 
Brian, good morning. Understandably, a lot more x-rays going on right now to check respiratory illness among COVID-19 patients. And radiologists here at the University of Utah Health are trying to minimize risk while preserving personal protective equipment with what they're calling innovative x-rays. Now take a look at this video given to us from the University of Utah. This new technique allows radiologists to use portable x-ray machines, which are nothing new, to take chest x-rays through the glass of observation rooms with suspected or confirmed COVID-19 patients inside. Now, limiting interaction between radiologists and patient saves medical, medical personnel from using two new sets of personal protective equipment each time. Now, despite the innovative technique, doctors say these x-rays are accurate. We were working to make sure that it is the same or similar to what we normally do um, when we're in imaging patients inside the room. So this is really just using an old machine, uh, nothing new to do something new with. I don't know. Uh, health officials predict another wave of the virus. This technique could save PPE in the long run. Now, back out here live, here's a live look at the Block U on campus. Now, health officials are lighting up the U white to thank medical personnel for their hard work who are on the front lines of this pandemic. Reporting live, Jared Jotanini, ABC4 News. Also happening today, Intermountain Healthcare will join national protocol giving COVID-19 patients access to plasma donations. The program allows plasma donated by recovered patients to be processed and given to patients with the virus. Experts at Intermountain Healthcare Transfusion also conducted Utah's first plasma transfusion of a COVID-19 patient. Clinicians will announce the details of the new protocol at noon. We'll have more details on air later today and online at abc4.com. And here's a positive for you about one of our own here at ABC4 News. Anchor reporter Nick McGurk tested negative for COVID-19. He was feeling sick recently, got tested over the weekend. He got his results yesterday, and he does not have the coronavirus. We're glad he can help breathe a sigh of relief today. We are here for you too, Nick. Now, let's check your weather here with meteorologist Erica Martin. Erica, let's keep that good news coming. Yeah, okay, so for the Wasatch Front, mm -hmm. yes, <laughs> but we always could use some rain around here, and that's what we're getting in St. George. Lots of clouds out there. The atmosphere is very juicy, buoyant. Those air parcels rising, of course, that's what we need. Daytime uh, break in those clouds also will trigger those isolated thunderstorms. So right now, St. George, you are seeing some showers moving through. Storm Tracker Radar doing a great job picking up on those returns. You can actually see that counterclockwise circulation there. We're not done yet. We still have more showers moving through, guys. Don't worry. Conditions will start to improve later. Picking up on some lightning strikes just south of Kanab. So, again, something to be aware of later this afternoon for the evening hours when you're driving home. Take your time. You may encounter some slick spots. But coming up in just a bit, I'm talking about sunshine and a major warm-up. Back to you. That's my kind of talk. Thank you, Erica. For the first time, we are hearing exclusively from the family of the Kearns man who was shot and killed during an altercation with police exactly one month today. His loved ones now struggling with very little answers and not being able to give him a proper funeral due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Family members of 28 year old Brian Pena Valencia describe him as a man who enjoyed spending time with his loved ones. They spoke with us in an exclusive interview under the condition of anonymity. They say he had a passion for lifting weights, working on cars, but mostly spending time with his nine-year-old son, Luciano. Brian was one of a kind. He had a personality that people were automatically drawn to. He was always a light in any room he entered. Pena's family says he recently graduated from a drug program and was highly motivated to succeed for his son and his future. He never played the poor me card. He would always own up to his struggle and pick himself up and try again. He definitely had a warrior state of mind. On March 21st, the morning after Pena finished his rehab program, Unified Police say he fled after they tried to pull him over in Taylorsville. They say his black Cadillac matched the description of a car that left the scene of a recent shooting. And what it appears is that car took that turn wide, hit the median, and then came to a rest on the sidewalk hitting another street sign. As they came around the corner, they saw the driver get out of that car and begin running down the sidewalk and then jumped over a fence and our officers pursued them on foot. Pena was eventually shot and killed by police, but the details of what led up to that altercation is still unknown. It was very out of character for him. Brian was not a big person, 
so it was hard for him to be intimidating to anyone. As they wait for answers from Salt Lake City Police, who is handling the investigation, they say what made the grieving process difficult was not being able to give him a proper funeral because of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is a great loss for our family. His son will never get to grow up with his father. We were only allowed to have 10 people attend. We had to Facebook Live his ceremony to others, mainly family that wanted to say goodbye. We are deeply saddened about the way that it had to be done. Reached out to both Salt Lake City Police and Unified Police, but they say they can't comment and there is no additional information to release at this time because of the ongoing investigation. And South Jordan Police have now identified the victim in a suspicious death from yesterday. Police say she's 35-year-old Ashley Sorensen from Park City. Police say they first responded to a domestic violence call but couldn't get a hold of the man and woman involved, so they left. Well, police say three hours later, a friend went to the home and found Sorensen's body with a gunshot wound. Right now, it's unclear who shot her, but we're told everyone is cooperating with police. New information on an apartment fire in South Salt Lake. Officials now offering a $5,000 reward for information leading to the person or people who started the fire. It happened last Thursday near 3300 South and 400 East in South Salt Lake. According to the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, the fire caused more than a million dollars in damage. All 24 apartments and 18 parked cars were destroyed. If you have any information on this incident, you're asked to contact South Salt Lake Police. Happening this week, a new look coming to Veterans Memorial Park in West Jordan. To celebrate Earth Day on Wednesday, 3,000 feet of flags will be placed six feet apart around Veterans Memorial Park, and that's around 400 flags. The flags will stay up for two weeks. All right, now still ahead here on Midday, lawmakers nearing a deal on Capitol Hill. Fair which relief program could receive a new boost of funding. Then testing trials for antibodies rolling out across the country. While why health experts say more people may have the virus than previously thought. And coming up in today's Daily Dish, Tom Hanks opening up about his COVID-19 symptoms. Hear why the actor says wife Rita Wilson had it so much worse. Plus, a royal birthday. Hear why the Queen's birthday celebration just might look a little bit different this year. And before we head to break, let's take a live look outside. This is downtown Salt Lake City on a Tuesday. It is a beautiful start to your day. Midday, we'll be right back.
And welcome back everybody. Time for today's Daily Dish. Hello to Brian. Hello to all of hello, you hello. watching. Uh, Brian, I know you like Good Morning America. Uh, right. So I have news for you if you okay. like that show too. George Stephanopoulos has now been cleared. Uh, this is the newest information of COVID-19 after being diagnosed testing positive for antibodies. He says he now plans to donate his blood plasma. He says such good news. Uh, this confirmed these antibodies that I am cleared of the virus after weeks without symptoms. He said that in a tweet. He says I also want to make a blood donation to help a plasma donation as well. Um, this comes just after again he tested positive when his wife Allie Wentworth contracted it. But George never had symptoms. She was really sick and he was not. The newsman, by the way, recently ticking off Hampton residents by going out in public after his wife's diagnosis. He was spotted taking a stroll without his mask on. Someone posting uh, somebody who reports on the pandemic every day. Why is he not being safe? He doesn't care. A source later insisting that he only had his face uncovered because he was a safe distance and outside and not by anyone else. Uh, so yeah, it's he's good now, but definitely had a few moments where he was out and about that people that live in his area, Brian, were not very happy with. Yeah, when you're someone in his position, he's definitely under the microscope. I think one good positive thing out of his situation is you're hearing about him donating plasma. Mm -hmm. They're saying that that plasma is really helping get a lot of people the antibodies, hopefully, that they need. I mean, we're just now learning about the benefits of that plasma from patients who recovered. And so interesting, two people mm -hmm. in the exact same household with completely opposite right. symptoms. Yeah, he was um, asymptomatic the entire time. Well, and this is interesting. Pink is doing so much better. Remember, she and her son had it. Her yeah. husband never got it. She's just posting a picture of the family now on social media, and fans are so happy to see her son doing okay. She went through a scary battle with the coronavirus. That was back uh, the beginning of April. She shared she tested positive for it along with her three year old son, Jameson. Uh, her husband, Carrie Hart, and daughter Willow, the eight year old little girl behind him, never showed any signs that they were infected. So two weeks later, she showed a candid moment of both the kids looking healthy and happy. The first one of them together since the ordeal. She jokingly captioned it, whose child is this? Because he looked like a little rock star. A fan saying he's his mom's son, that's for sure. He looks just like you. Another saying the apple never falls far from the tree. The Grammy winner did open up to Ellen uh, recently just how worried she was about him when he got COVID-19. She said his feet Fever was up to 103 degrees and she says two days later she tested positive. She's calling it Brian quote terrifying, especially when it's your baby. Yeah, that not only that. It. Well, you have her. She has a situation with asthma, if I remember correctly. And so for the lungs, right, this is a respiratory disease. So if you have asthma problems, you're more likely to be vulnerable for some of those higher symptoms. OK, and this interesting too. Tom mm -hmm. Hanks talking about his wife and how her symptoms were different right. than his. Yeah. Uh, that's Rita Wilson that we're talking about. And he just did an interview speaking with the National Defense Radio Show about how they experienced COVID-19 completely differently. He says she had a much higher fever, lost her sense of taste and smell, had no joy from food for the better part of three weeks. He says he had some bad body aches, was fatigued, a little bit nauseous, he says, but she was crawling on the floor to get to the bathroom. So their diagnosis, they announced more than a month ago. It was in early March. They were some of the first celebrities to come down with the virus. They were in Australia because he was there filming a movie. So he says we were in lockdown. Australia wasn't really dealing with it a whole lot yet when we got it. But he says uh, the one thing he did notice, Brian, is he would try to exercise while he had it. And he oh, says he was yeah. out of breath so quickly. And then he asked a nurse, what is that? And she said, sir, you have COVID-19. You need He's to take like, it easy. Yeah, I mean, that's the last thing you want to do if you have an illness that's attacking your lungs. He said he couldn't, yeah. he could not sit anymore. So he got up mm -hmm. to do stretches and said it felt like he was moving a mountain just to lean yeah. over and do a stretch. I can only imagine. So he did, he did notice that side effect. Uh, the queen is celebrating her birthday. So happy 94th uh, to her royal highness. This will be a much different birthday than in years past. She is at Windsor Castle right now with husband Prince Philip. And on Monday, he sent a thank you message to everyone still working to keep that country up and running. So she canceled her usual birthday gun salute. This is the first time, Brian, in 68 years wow. that they have not done that. Um, a royal source telling CNN she felt it would be inappropriate due to the coronavirus pandemic. The palace is expected to celebrate uh, the Queen's birthday on April 21st on social media. But all family related affairs, including phone calls, uh, video calls, will remain private this year. And Brian, I agree that just seems appropriate, especially uh, for the queen who's been very careful 
to make a statement to the sure. public, but then other than that, be out of the public eye and stay home and staying safe. It just goes to show you whether you're the queen or whether you're an average Joe over here in Utah, the virus doesn't care. No, this it's is a much everything. different yeah. year for mm, all of us. You bet. Yeah. That's it for today's Daily Dish. We'll send it over to meteorologist Erica Martin, who's definitely queen with the forecast she's got for the weekend here, Erica. Oh, I thought you were going to say I was an average Joe. But you know what? I am loving the queen. I mean, can I say she's slaying that outfit? Is that okay? I hope it's respectful. Anyway, a live look outside. Colonial flag looking gorgeous here along the Wasatch Front, uh, Salt Lake City. Everybody's central, northern Utah seeing really nice conditions. Southern Utah, different story. Let's go ahead and take a look at that camera. The SUU quad looking well, a little rainy out there, rain on the lens. Give yourself a little extra time for the commute out there. I am already seeing some ponding out there and standing water storm tracker radar. Even though this area of high pressure is just sitting here, it's really not going to be a weather maker for us until later tonight and tomorrow. Already seeing some lightning strikes right there along the border. A little farther south, notice we are seeing some returns. A lot of this not making it to the ground. In fact, none of it is making it to the ground right around Provo. We're seeing some clouds develop. That's pretty typical. Those clouds have to build up. That atmosphere has to be completely saturated as far as that thermal profile goes. I tell that all the time, but farther south, yeah, we are seeing those scattered showers out there. And unfortunately, we're going to see those scattered showers until later tonight. Current temperature for Rock Springs 52 degrees, Salt Lake City 61, Wendover in the mid 60s for you, Price upper 50, Cedar City mid 40s. St. George 54, Lake Powell 57 degrees. So let's take a look at our high res future cast. Put this into motion here with one pause point maybe here. That area of high pressure seems to kind of retreat a little bit. And notice by later tonight, we are starting to see a clearing in those clouds and those showers. But I still think we will see some isolated thunderstorms for St. George. Keep that in mind. Now tomorrow, keep this in mind as well. It is officially Earth Day. I'm so excited, guys. I study sustainability also, and it's so important to at least show our plan Planet, some TLC. It was first uh, founded in 1970 and officially recognized in 1990. And it did help with the passage of the Clean Air Act and Water Improvement Act as well. So speaking of water, the driveway car wash looks like this. It's a go on Friday and Saturday, but it's better to go to a commercial uh, uh, drive, drive car wash if you could, simply because it does save water. That was a mouthful. St. George extended forecast, keeping it warm by this weekend. Sunday, 90, Monday, 90. And for the Wasatch Front, I am tracking some showers and thunderstorms on Thursday. More Nisha Bryan, Rosie, and myself after the break. What type of gathering would you consider? Could you have? Yeah. Andrew, how are we doing? Hello, how Hi. are you? Hi. Happy Tuesday. You too. It's your shot. It's it's the shot that makes you look oh so handsome. <laughs> Brian, Photoshop can do amazing things. Brian's you know? jealous. Brian's <laughs> trying to trying to swap you spots out there. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did take a shower there. this morning, though. You know what? The fact that you showered, like you're winning, winning today. <laughs> okay, Andrew, uh, we'll talk with, we'll start with um, precautions that you're taking at the clinic. Um, still seeing patients. Yeah, uh, what, what is it? Um, uh, precautions, kay. how to get in contact with you. Perfect. Yep. Well, Matthew texted me yesterday. Welcome back to Midday. Wasatch Medical Clinic has a breakthrough treatment for erectile dysfunction that does not require any medication, injections, or surgery. And Andrew joining us from the ABC4 backyard to tell us all about it. Hi, Andrew. 
Hey, how you doing? That's right. Uh, you said it. No pills, no injections, no surgery. When it comes to erectile dysfunction, that's been the only solution. The pills, as we know, cause nasty side effects. We have a new treatment called acoustic wave therapy. It opens up and regrows blood vessels. Think about that. ED is a blood flow issue. That's what this finally solves. It gets those nasty side effects out of the picture. Um, what are you talking about when you say side effects, uh, Andrew? What have people been frustrated with in the past? The headaches, that is the main thing, the blurred vision. A guy that takes the pill often has kind of the Viagra hangover effect the next day. Is this something that people are still worried about during a, a pandemic? Are you still seeing patients? Yeah, we are. In some cases, we're seeing more patients. Maybe they're spending more time at home with their loved one. We're still open. We're following all of the CDC guidelines. We're taking your temperature at the door. We're using hospital grade sanitizer throughout the day. We believe it's a safe time to come in. Andrew, are we talking about this issue more and more or for some people out there? Is it still one that they're worried about coming in? Yeah, yeah, there are guys that are still worried about it, but uh, I do believe that the conversation is opening up. This is a massive problem. It can wreak havoc on a relationship and guys are getting it taken care of for the long term. If you take the pill, you're going to be taking it for life. But look at the blood vessels on the left and then on the right. We rejuvenate everything. We get the blood flow going where you want it, when you want it. Andrew, is this a painful treatment and how no. many do you need? Yeah, great questions. I would say no, it's not painful. Maybe a little bit annoying, but we're talking eight to 10 minutes per treatment. You might do a few treatments over two to three weeks. That's it, there's an end date. And you know, this will be a long lasting fix, many years at least. I know you have a special offer for our viewers if they are watching right now. We do, if you're out there struggling with ED, if you're sick of the pills, we're doing a lot for free right now. Call us, we'll do the initial assessment exam blood flow ultrasound with our doctor free we're also going to give you a special gift that produces instant results in the bedroom whether you do the treatments or not all of it is free to those that call us now wasatchmedicalclinic.com everybody or go to our website and we will link you that's abc4.com midday and you can say hi to andrew he'll make it easy for you over at wasatch medical clinic thanks andrew thank you nisha brian over to you all right thank you nisha coming up here on midday stimulus payments arriving for millions of americans their white debt collectors now trying to take that money and what lawmakers are doing to stop them and then next the president now temporarily suspending immigration to the u.s Hear why he says this will help the fight against the invisible enemy. You're watching ABC4 News.
Thanks for sticking with us for Midday. I'm Brian Carlson. And I'm Rosie Nguyen. I'm helping our Midday team report so we can better practice social distancing. We're following some developing news on North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. An anonymous U.S. official says the Supreme Leader's health is in, quote, grave danger. His health has been in question since he missed the celebration of his grandfather and founder of North Korea on April 15th. The South Korean Unification Ministry is currently trying to get a detailed report on Kim Jong-un's condition. And President Trump is now temporarily suspending immigration to the U.S. during this pandemic. Last night, the president tweeted he'll sign an executive order to pause immigration to fight against what he calls the invisible enemy and to protect the jobs of American citizens. So far, it's unclear how the order will carry out or how long that suspension could last. Meanwhile, the Treasury Department is looking into if it can stop debt collector collectors from garnishing government stimulus payments. Those $1,200 payments started going directly into millions of Americans' bank accounts last week. But once it's there, banks and debt collectors can garnish that money for things like loans, overdraft fees, and other debts. Now there's a bipartisan effort in Congress to have the money barred from debt collection. And on Capitol Hill, lawmakers have now reached a deal on a second round of economic relief for small businesses, their workers, and hospitals. ABC's Inez de Catara has more from Washington. This morning, Senator Chuck Schumer telling CNN the White House and lawmakers on Capitol Hill have reached a deal on a new emergency funding plan. We came to an agreement on just about every issue. Staff was up all night uh, writing. There's still a few more I's to dot and T's to cross, but we have a deal. The $450 billion deal would pump an additional $310 billion into the Paycheck Protection Program for small businesses. We were, you know, feeling pretty good about where we were in the world 10 years on or, you know, approaching our 10-year anniversary, and now it's just all turned upside down. Democrats also pushed to have the plan include money for nationwide testing and another $75 billion for hospitals. Just as Beaumont Health in Michigan announces today, it is temporarily laying off more than 2,400 employees and is permanently eliminating 450 positions due to the dire financial effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and the loss of more profitable elective surgeries. What we're going through as healthcare providers and people working in the hospital is something I would never wish on anybody. The oil industry also taking a big hit. We've had oil demand collapse. People are driving less. No one's flying anywhere. And with storage capacity for excess oil running out, oil futures dropping below zero dollars for the first time. If that new relief bill is approved by the Senate, the House is expected to consider it as early as Thursday. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. As antibody tests roll out across the country, new data shows the number of people infected with the virus may be higher than originally expected. In Los Angeles County alone, numbers suggest the outbreak could be up to 55 times worse than previously thought. Researchers at USC tested nearly 900 people for antibodies, and the results estimate up to 442,000 people in the county have been infected with the virus as of April 9th. Doctors say the results are informative, but there's still a long way to go. These tests are good for counting the number of people who have had COVID. These tests are not good for telling if someone has immunity uh, against COVID. A large-scale antibody testing trial will soon take place in New York. The goal is to randomly test 3,000 people across the state. And health experts also say the U.S. will need to do millions of tests each week before restrictions can be lifted. That's according to do, uh, two different plans for reopening our society. A report from the Rockefeller Foundation calls for 3 to 30 million tests a week. The other, by Harvard's Center for Ethics, says America needs 20 million tests a day. Both proposals cast doubt on if we're ready to relax social distancing while some states are starting to do so. Now, as a way to help the U.S. reach its testing goal, the FDA has now authorized the first at-home COVID-19 testing kits. They're called Pixel by LabCorp COVID-19 Test Home Collection Kits. They allow patients to collect nasal swab samples at home and then mail them in for results. According to the FDA, LabCorp will make the test available in most states in the coming weeks. However, people will need a doctor's note to get the at-home test kit. 
Amazon workers are reportedly planning another strike over concerns about COVID-19. USA Today is reporting hundreds of warehouse workers are planning to strike starting today. They want to improve work conditions to protect themselves against the virus. Amazon has said it's taking protective measures such as providing masks, raising pay and hiring more workers. But no word if this will include Utah's Amazon warehouse. United Airlines is now using one of its empty cargo facilities to help distribute food. A baggage handler at the George Bush Airport in Houston first got the idea when they saw a TV ad from the food bank asking for help. He knew many of his co-workers had extra downtime because demand for the travel had dropped and the airline had lots of extra space. So he put two and two together and now hundreds of United employees are now sorting and distributing relief packages. I like that sometimes a small idea turns into a real big thing helping a lot Just of people. Just thought of it mm -hmm. and it worked. You're right. <laughs> right. I'm back now with news that's trending and we keep the good news going with a birthday celebration. A 14 year old. This is Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes daughter Suri Cruise had a birthday on April 18th and Katie Holmes shared a rare picture of her daughter over the weekend to celebrate. The adorable shot captures the back of her head donning an elaborate flower crown made from white and pink roses birthday vibe. She captioned the photo on another snap. She said happy birthday, sweetheart. I am so blessed to be your mom. May this year be incredible. Since her headline making divorce from Tom Cruise back in 2012, Katie Holmes has preferred to keep her private life private, and that means even on her social media account, glimpses of her daughter are few and far between these days. But opening up in an interview back in 2017, the mom says she wanted to give her daughter, quote, a stable and innocent childhood free of the cameras. And so that's exactly what she's doing. But 14 years old, Brian, already. Uh, better late than never, I suppose, right? Better late than <laughs> never. Yes, her birthday was on April 18th. Okay, like many places in the country, if you go to parks in Florida, they are closed and you can get cited for using the parks. Well, someone tried it and that someone was a big name. Tom Brady cited in Tampa, Florida because of the restrictions. He was trying to work out in the park, according uh, to sources. And uh, the mayor now doing an interview about it there saying, yes, the superstar quarterback was cited for doing that workout. Park staff came across Brady while patrolling a downtown park. And uh, she says, yeah, I'm not one to gossip, but that's exactly what happened. Our parks are shut down. Police are patrolling, park staff are patrolling there. You're not supposed to do contact sports. You're not supposed to work out. They went over to tell him it was closed, figured out it was Tom Brady, and he was cited. Mm -hmm. So just like mm -hmm. anybody else, that superstar NFL quarterback got a citation for working out in the park there. It makes you wonder. I mean, he had that big house. I think it was Derek Jeter's house that he had in Tampa that he's now living in. You think there's enough room in that house or in the yard right there to work out. They didn't have to go down to the park. He's but. just exploring his new digs, exploring the neighborhood, sure. and a workout broke out, but that's not allowed uh -huh. right now in Florida. So. Can't do it. Don't yeah. do it. All right. Do you like Michelle Obama? How would you like Michelle Obama to read to you? She's doing this every single Monday. It's a virtual read along. She's pitching in to educate and entertain children during the COVID-19 lockdown. So she started this new series in collaboration with PBS Kids, where she live streams reading a children's book. The four week series is called Read Along Mondays with Michelle Obama. Uh, children can follow along live every Monday at noon on PBS's Kids Facebook page. They also have a YouTube channel. They can also see the archive videos anytime on Penguin Random House's Facebook page. So she says she's excited to give kids a chance to practice their reading and also hear some wonderful stories. She's also very happy to give homeschool weary parents and caretakers a much needed break. So maybe Brian, you set up the iPad, you set up the computer, and you go take a little walk around the house for just a second while Michelle Obama does the reading. I can imagine like her reading a book would be a lot of fun to listen to, can't you? She's animated, yeah. right? She's, She's animated excited, and right? for a lot of those books, because I'm sure Michelle read them to her kids, I've read them mm -hmm. to mine, you know what's coming up next so you can get yeah. excited yeah. about it. Yeah, this one, Dolly Parton's <laughs> doing the same thing, That's a lot right. of fun. All right, coming up here on Midday, recognizing our high school seniors who may not walk for graduation this year. See who we're featuring today from the COVID class of 2020 and how to spot spotlight your senior. Before we head to the break, as a live look outside. This is St. George and little clouds out there today. We'll tell you what's in store with the weather when we return.
While you're at home, maybe you're checking out your appearance more and you're sick of those under eye backs or crow's feet. Well, Plexiderm has a product that can take years off your appearance in minutes. And we do want to remind you this segment was previously recorded before the CDC recommended social distancing. Take a look. Can you take 10 to 20 years off of your face in minutes? Well, Scott DeFalco with Plexiderm says yes. yes. A big yes, yes you can. Ray. Yes, okay. you can with Plexiderm. Get out your OMG emojis because mm. what you and your viewers are about to witness in real time is gonna shock you, Saray. I brought a time-lapse video showing Plexiderm in action. This is our new model. I call her Sweet Georgine, Saray. Sweet Georgine, Sweet all right. Sweet Georgine. She came in with the problem areas around her eyes with the crow's feet, around her mouth with the laugh lines. We sped this up to 20 seconds okay, in real time. Okay, you can see it working. In, yes, it was only a minute and a half in wow. real time. With Plexiderm's new rapid reduction serum, look at the results, they're incredible. Okay, nothing speaks louder than results. Yes. Before and afters. The before and afters, and you see it on your screen. It's men and women of all ages, and it's working on all the key signs of aging, Saray. The under eye bags, the forehead lines, the crow's feet, the laugh lines around your mouth, and a real underappreciated part of your body that with aging is an issue. There it is on your screen, loose skin under the neck. Okay, so yeah. celebrities are swearing by this product too. <laughs> on the red carpet, they're putting this on before they're walking that all important red yes, carpet. Yes, I can't say who, that's another segment, but we'll get to that at another time. But uh, makeup artists are using it and also regular people like a mom we have here, Samantha. So I'm waiting with my children at the bus stop and they they always say to me, wow, mom, you look terrible. I honestly, since I've been using the Plexiderm and I'll go out to the bus stop with no makeup on so I can let my Plexiderm dry and they don't, haven't said a word. They haven't said anything. They're not saying that I look bad. So I think it's working. <laughs> Boy, kids say the darndest things, don't they? They're adorable. <laughs> they are, but I love about the makeup artist too because I get asked from ladies a lot, does it work with makeup? And it does, Saray. You can do one of two things with Plexiderm. You can put it on a clean, dry face, wait 10 minutes for it to settle, then your makeup is normal. Or I'm about to lose my man card here because I'm gonna talk <laughs> concealer and foundation. Uh, you can use one part of your liquid concealer foundation, mix it with two parts of the Plexiderm Rapid Reduction Serum. Again, spread that evenly over your face, wait 10 minutes, and that's it. And the best part about this product, not just how quickly it works, how long it lasts, Saray up to 10 hours. What is in this product that makes it so dramatically effective? Yeah, you would think people just want to know does it work, yes. but they're interested in the science behind it. And guys, we don't care. We just want to know if it works. But ladies are interested in that. We've upped our game with the ingredients. We've added peptides and collagen to the formula, Saray. So when you're talking peptides and collagen, we're talking moisture and elasticity. So we're binding that water to your skin to give you a nice, youthful, glowing look like you saw with the before and afters. But inducing that collagen production is huge because that's responsible for the elasticity in your skin. That, again, is why it's lasting so long with the results up to 10 hours. The makeup artist says she swears by it. Let's listen to what she had to say. Hi guys, my name is Sandy Marinese. I'm a professional hair and makeup artist. And one of the number one question that I always get in my chair is, can you make me look younger? So we had a few people that we applied it to. And some of them at first I was like, oh, I don't know if this is gonna work. And I was so impressed how fast, efficient, and how well it really worked. Now I could really say to people, yes, I can make you look younger. 50% off, by the way, free shipping. Yeah, speaking about another great thing. Huge. 50% free shipping. If you call the 1-800 number on your screen or just go to Plexiderm.com. We're looking our best. Thanks to <laughs> Plexiderm.
Time now for Utah's most accurate forecast. Weather rate certified nine years in a row. Hello, I'm meteorologist Erica Martina. Live look outside our pinpoint webcam. Loving this shot right now. Lake Mountain looking gorgeous right now. Conditions are dry here. However, we are seeing showers for parts of the state. Cedar City Airport, even though the tarmac is slick and we were seeing some showers, we see a little bit of a break right now, but I'm confident those showers will continue. And in fact, here's a look at our infrared satellite loop showing us those cold high clouds developing. Still has a potent potential there for some more rain showers as the afternoon comes to a close uh, and to the evening hours. The good news is everything starts to clear later tonight by about 10 11 p.m. I'll time that out for you hour by hour, but we can see that this area of high pressure will retreat just a little bit. It'll be our weather maker by tomorrow, but we still have to be clear of those showers and those isolated thunderstorms. So we saw a couple of breaks in those clouds allowed for enough daytime heating, so the atmosphere is unstable enough. We are seeing some lightning strikes here, so be mindful of that if you are in this area. Southern Utah right now still seeing more rain showers moving through and the threat of some more isolated thunderstorms as this starts to weaken and eventually that area of high pressure becomes the dominant weather maker. So current temperature for Logan 55 degrees, Ogden at 62, Salt Lake City 61 and Provo currently at 56 degrees. St. George 54 for you. You're seeing showers redevelop even if you don't see them right now. High res future cast. We're going to go out 24 hours and get this into motion. A few pause points here. The first one will be later this afternoon at 2 p.m. And notice how we're not seeing an end to those showers yet. A little bit of a break, then more showers start to redevelop. Again, very unorganized. Tends to happen with those troughs. However, we're not free of those showers until later tonight by about 10, 11 p.m. Certainly here by midnight, you're seeing mainly clouds out there, maybe a few pop-ups. That's just about it. But then I'm tracking the next weather maker, and that's going to be Wednesday into Thursday. So showers and isolated thunderstorms along the Wasatch Front on Thursday. Be mindful of that. We have that upper level low and that cold front right there and that's why temperatures you'll see on the extended outlook will be colder on Thursday along the Wasatch Front. So St. George, here's a look at your extended forecast. I cannot clear us of those thunder showers just yet. 77 is the expected high temperature, but tomorrow we have sunshine in the forecast, 82 degrees. Now on Thursday, I'm going mostly sunny, but we could very well see partly cloudy skies. I don't expect any showers there, but certainly you saw that cold front digging on down, so those clouds could develop, and I'm still going with mostly sunny for now. 84 degrees, 83 and sunshine on Saturday and Friday. And then on Sunday, we do have temperatures climbing into the low 90s, mostly sunny skies. We could see a few extra clouds out there on Sunday. And on Monday, I'm going to keep it at 90. Now for the Wasatch Front, totally different story, at least for the next couple of days, because even though we do warm up by tomorrow, upper 60s, almost 70. On Thursday, we go into the low 60s. That's the same deal on Friday, again, behind that cold front. And that's when we see the chances of some showers. Notice I did add the chance of some showers on on Friday, not a washout, but certainly some showers. Then on Saturday, partly cloudy skies. But let's look ahead, 76 on Sunday and 77, almost 80 on Monday. More midday coming up after the break. We'll see you then.
All right, it's time to celebrate the COVID class of 2020, where we honor this year's high school seniors because, frankly, they deserve some love. That they do. So today's senior is Gavin Passy. That's Gavin. He's a graduating senior from Mountain Crest High School in Cache County. So as you probably guessed, he'll be attending Utah State in the fall. He's majoring in civil engineering, Nisha. Congratulations to him. This is a big deal mm -hmm. to graduate. Yeah. If you know a senior, this is such a big deal for so many of those out there. Send in their photo to us so we can congratulate them right here on TV. Email us a photo and maybe a little paragraph Ooh. about them. What are you doing over there, Brian? I'm, I'm screeching <laughs> things over here. I'm like, okay. it's like you're no. the bad student at the chalkboard, you know? You're not Ooh. supposed to be doing stuff. Go to the back of the class, Brian. That's no, not I can't recreate it. A graduation. ABC4.com, <laughs> everybody. Send those to us. We promise we won't interrupt them next time. Will do. Congratulations, <laughs> Gavin. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody.